My dad works in B2B marketing. He came by my school for career day and said he was a big ROAS man. Then he told everyone how much he loved calculating his return on ad spend. My friends still laugh at me to this day. Not everyone gets B2B, but with LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people who do. Get a $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash results to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be, to be. Summer is supposed to be an opportunity to slow down. But when you look at your kids, you can't help but notice that your kids are growing up fast. Help them build independence as they grow with Greenlight. Greenlight is a debit card and money app for families where parents can keep an eye on kids' money habits while kids learn how to save, invest, and spend wisely. It's the easy, convenient way to raise financially smart kids. Get your first month free when you sign up at greenlight.com slash Spotify. When it comes to towing, seeing is believing. That's why Chevy Truck's advanced camera technology offers up to eight available cameras for 14 unique views, so you can focus on the view that really matters. Chevrolet, together let's drive. Learn more about Chevy Trucks at Chevy.com. Safety or driver assistance features are no substitute for the driver's responsibility to operate the vehicle in a safe manner. Read the vehicle owner's manual for important feature limitations and information. Hello, everybody. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whenever you are watching this. Um, we are back. The SPFL is back, and it's back in full flow this weekend. And that can only mean one thing, that it's time for us to sit down, dissect it all, analyse everything. Who's took the lead in the title race? Who's took the lead in the sack race? All of it. We will go through it all. And with me, to do that uh, on this very sunny afternoon, I have got Ian. Ian, how are we doing? I'm doing all right. Partially sighted because I've had the, uh, an ice cream in the day, so eye drops have gone in, so I can kind of make you all out. Um, hence why the glasses are on to help me not strain my eyes. Um, you lucky people have got the sun. We've swapped because uh, last time we were on with each other, it was really hot down here. It's no raining, so we've swapped the weather. Uh, so, yeah, but other than that, all good. Listen, you, you really don't want to see us in much clearer vision anyway, and it's probably for the best. Um, Robert, how are we? Hi, good. Listen, I've had a really uneventful day if the backstage was to go out and buy. So, um, no, looking forward to the next hour or so, as you said, um, title's over, Paddy Power have paid out, so we can sweep that aside. Um, I've Some great goals, some, some, some new names in the league as well, so yeah, plenty to talk about. Cheers. And we have the gaffer, Martin. How's it going? Oh, me? Right, I, I, I'm, I'm very good, Connor, actually. Um, very, very good. Um, had a very good day. Um, like Robert says, the league's done, it's over, so we don't need to be worried anymore. That's it. And we can just sit back, relax, and enjoy the next 37 games. Yes. Uh, needless to say, if he was in a coffin, you couldn't get the lid done. Um <laughs> Okay then, we will uh, get ourselves kicked off. Sad thing as you could. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, well, right. So we'll open up. We'll get kicked off with what I think. You know, sometimes when you're you're sitting, just a bit of insider knowledge for the viewers. Sometimes when you're sitting writing this up as the host, sometimes you're trying to juggle and go, what's best to place as as the first game to speak about. Sometimes it causes you a headache. This weekend. None of that. Absolutely easy as you like. Uh, the Dundee Derby at Tannadice, for me, by far the best game of the weekend. Um, two years, Ian, since these two last uh, last met, and uh, it was well worth the wait. It was well worth the wait. Wasn't it nice to see another SPFL Derby on the telly for a change? Um, we can get on, uh, the Old Firm can get on, the Dundee Derby can get on, but apparently the Edinburgh Derby is not good enough for Sky TV, so, uh, but it was, it was fantastic to see it back, the uh, place was a sellout, I've seen fan perspective videos from YouTube as well, uh, the whole day, a bit, it's probably one of the weirdest derbies in the sense of that the two sets of fans walking up and down the same street, because what else are you going to do, 
Um, I mean, you couldn't do that with the other two. Um, but I mean, the atmosphere it created, it was actually a really, really good game. And watching it on Sky, I, caught, I got caught up in it as well. And it's unusual for me because I don't normally, but uh, yeah, it was a cracking game to watch. And it was good to see um, uh, the Dundee Derby back again. Can I just add to that, Connor, actually, really quickly, that see if you look at the league now, you've got the Old Firm, you've got the Dundee Derby, you've got the Edinburgh Derby, you've got some actual real high quality, maybe not go so far as to say high quality, but you've got high, high drama, really, really good, intense derbies now in the top league. Um, we're constantly putting our own league down, constantly talking about the quality of our own league, but it's got some real passionate derbies in it this season. And surely that can only be a positive. Yeah, hundred percent. Aye, you've got for the the old school viewers the the new firm derby, of course, Dundee United and Aberdeen. Most people don't call it that anymore, but that's what it used to be called. Um, of course, Dundee United and St Johnston. That's the proper Tayside derby. Although Dundee and St Johnston are also a derby, but it's more United. So yeah, it's all exciting times, Robert. Um, for it to come back, I do have a quick question though, because before the game kicked off, Dundee gave Dundee United a guard of honour. Uh, for the the flag raising of of the championship uh, flag last year, what's what's your thoughts on that? Because for me, that's a, a strange one. Dundee were in the league above. Why do they care that United won the championship? Well, I think it's if it had, it's not for me. Basically, had it been St Johnston or St Mirren, then fair enough. But it's your nearest and dearest, and it's Derby Day. I think that just needs to be parked. And there was some sort of wry smiles for the Dundee United players that was all walking past, seeing them all giving them a wee clap, but I think, you know, you were quite vocal last season about, you know, that selling a product and selling the derbies, and uh, I think that was, uh, you know, evident on Sunday that, you know, it's, we've, we've got some good games, and Martin says, to be to be showcasing, and, and, it, and it lived up to the to the bill, and it was, a, it was a great match right for the off. Would there have been so, any financial implications, Connor, had they not done it? I don't know um, if it's like a rule from the SPFL that you have to do it. Well, I don't know. I mean, I know it's slightly different because it wasn't the opening game, but I'm pretty sure, um, I can't remember if it was, was it last year or the season before, Rangers had played Celtic after they won the league and didn't give them a guard honour for obvious reasons because that would have caused major problems. And I, I don't think there was any financial penalty for that, but it might be different on the opening day because it is the you know, flag raising ceremony and all that sort of stuff. I just think they won the championship, that's fine, but surely if you're Dundee, Finishing top six in the Premier League, I'm afraid to say, without meaning to downplay it, for me is a, a better achievement than than winning the championship. As difficult as as that is, um, okay, uh, Ian, we didn't have to wait very long for for this one to spark into life and to get our first goal of the afternoon after a, a poor Saturday where there was no goals in two games. Dundee United shot into life, a um, couple of early early chances um, for them. And then the new boy, the new captain, Trapanovsky, um, he puts them in front after a, a bit of good play, you've got to say, in the midfield um, for Andy van der Sande, I think I said that properly. There will be a few names in here, by the way, that I will mispronounce because they're not easy. Um, Is the and, captain not Babinski? Uh, Babinski, sorry, you are quite correct. Um, see, I'm getting my, my unskis and skis mixed up, it's tragic. Um, but anyway, yes, um, van der Sander uh, squares it across and it's sorted in lovely by Krapanowski. I thought it was a brilliant finish and I, I thought the link-up play was excellent. First things first, thank God you're hosting because that would have been a travesty if it were me. I wouldn't have got a single one of them right, so well done. No, no, it was like Krapanowski. It. <laughs> yeah, I could, uh, it would have been Krapanowski if it were me. Um, <laughs> but uh, so, uh I saw that eye roll, Robert. You loved it, really. Uh, no, it was a great, great, great goal, that one. Uh, good movement, good link-up, good play. Just the quick moving it about. Dundee didn't really know what hit them at this point. They were just flying all over the place. Uh, Dundee were like pretty much a non-event for most of that first half, even though they did get back into it. Um, but, yeah, it was a good finish, good spot. Uh, no chance for the keeper. Um, just it, I think it quite surprised me how well Dundee were middle to front. Uh, the, the, how good they were. It did surprise me. I wasn't expecting them to be quite as fluid. Consider there's a lot of new names in there. Um, so, yeah, that was a, a great way to start it off. And it it literally lit the the touch paper in a way they went from there on. I know, I do know that um, Jim Goodwin has completely changed his formation for this season. 
Um, I think it might be, like Ian says, because of the, the new arrivals that he's brought into the club. He's trying to play a different style of football. Um, and I think it did really show in that first half. I was surprised, actually, at how well Dundee United played in that first half. Because, like you have said, look, Dundee finished sixth last season. They actually played really well in, in quite a lot of games. They, they, they settled into the, they've settled into the top league really well. Tony Dockett is a decent manager, good manager, got them playing well. And United in that first half destroyed them. Yeah, they did. Um, which I know will have brought a smile to your your face, your beloved tangerines and all that. Um, but I mean, Robert, uh, <laughs> um, you know, uh, proof if it was needed <laughs> that you can never ever lie down on Derby Day because despite how well Dundee United had started and fired themselves in front, it took Dundee just five minutes to get level again. Um, but a good play to get themselves into position and then a little bit of luck as well. Um, McEwen slid in down the side. He sort of cuts it back, but it's kind of blocked into the path of Murray, who has a shot saved. And then Palmer Holden, um, another new lad. Um, uh, you know, there's a theme to this match. Another new lad, he is there just to tap at home. Um, and fair play to him, because you'd think it's, it's an easy goal and he should score it, but um, it would have been easy to hoof that over the bar and, and let it get to you. So, um, yeah, a, a quick... Quick fire equaliser for Dundee. Listen, you see Simon Murray has a shot saved. I think he was trying to put it into an area, to be honest. Um, you know, maybe looking for the back stick, someone coming in there. But um, keeper gets a touch on it. And as you say, um, the boy sort of tucks it away and he sort of gets a bit of lift on it as well to try and stop it. You know, the keeper sort of getting up on the, the ground to it. So I think he just maybe scored a couple in um, the, the League Cup. Um, Group stage as well. I think he's maybe got three, he's got three or four goals from already, so he's, he's got, a bit, got a bit of a name for himself. But I, I see, to be honest, it was one of them where you just think, how's that happen? Because it was all done behind them for that point in terms of, you know, they were they were great in the forward areas, the wing backs especially. It's the is it Sperilge? I don't know if it's Sperilge. Um, yes, yeah, that that. But he was really really good, um, and obviously he comes out in the game obviously later on as well. But I thought he was really really good. Um, and obviously the two new guys, the, the, the skis as you've called in there, Tabernovsky and, and Babunski. I, I, I heard somewhere that Babunski did some sort of schooling at Barcelona. Um, I know he plays his one over. It was only point. mentioned about six hundred times, Robert, yeah. during the no, call. It's, it's the Scottish top flight. You've got if, if you've got it, <laughs> want it. That's what they say. So, um, so, I, so I, you know, as I say, I, I, I'd gone on record in the prediction show saying that I think that, you know Jim Goodson good when we get the sack, but. Look on that show, and I could be in the humble pie because they were very, very good, very, very fluid. Um, but as you say, Dundee United, Dundee, sorry, Dundee get back into the game, and I think you know Tony Docker that he'd said in his post match that it was about getting, getting them in at half ten and giving them you know a bit of a, a shake up because they, they mm. were showing their true sales in the first forty five. Absolutely, um, and uh, just quickly, Robert, just sticking with you, just very, very quickly, a quick question about Simon Murray, of course, uh, signed by Dundee. Obviously, he's a, a boyhood Dundee fan, so he'll be he'll be loving that. But of course, he, he had a not so successful spell at Dundee on loan. Um, was it twenty eighteen? I think it might have been. Uh, do you think this is a much better Simon Murray than the one they had before? It all come down to the service that he gets. You know, you've seen this week, uh, last couple of days, look, McCowan. Bit of bids from Hibs and, and Bolton not back. I'm sure they'll some they'll come back in for him before the end of the window. It's about keeping the best players. He's also the captain and he's the sort of the engine room, as it were, all the creativity. You see him taking all the free kicks and callers and stuff. So it's about the service, really, Connor. I think if he can get the service, you'll get goals out of him. You saw that Ross County last year. Um, and I think it's, it's a good addition. It's somebody that can come in and, and obviously take over the mantle for, for back of Yoko for last year. Um, but it's just about, you know, if they can maintain and keep that, that key man in McCowan. I think it also depends on how Tony Doherty wants to approach games with Simon Murray as well, because he is, he's a cracking footballer um, and he's, he's he's definitely at the level of a Dundee and, and mid-table premiership. I, I just think he's a he's a real cracking player and he can change games, as we've seen later on. Yes, yep, yeah, and we will we'll come to that just shortly. Um, well, Ian, um, you know, Dundee obviously got himself level, but then they didn't stay level for very long because this opening quarter and hour was just breathless stuff. Um, again, about another five minutes later, um, Dundee United get themselves, you know, back up the park. Uh, it's a uh, Svilge, I think is how you pronounce it, who I must say, what a ball this is. He absolutely, first time, smashes it across the face 
and there's Thompson, you know, in there to bundle at home with a tap in. I mean, it was just superb play. Two decent goals from Dundee United, and you can't. I mean, the, the way they play the ball about, like you said, that pass was just, just brilliant. There's no more you can do it. Laid it on the plate for him, really. Couldn't it would have been harder to miss, but depending on who you are, um, and and then you think of another game that happened this weekend, it is possible to miss when you it's a guilt edge chance, but I'm sure we'll come to that later on. Um, <laughs> but uh, the young lad, I mean, I mean to be fair, Thompson done the young lad, um, he seemed to really enjoy his day. He was at the heart of pretty much everything they were doing, but most of that first half especially. Um, it's just further proof that if you're good, uh, old enough, you're good and good enough, get him in the team. Um, because he played without fear. He went at him. He wasn't afraid. He didn't retire into himself. And he was on point when it, when it mattered the most to put that ball in and get him that 2-1 lead. And my God, he enjoyed his celebration anyway. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what it was all about. Like It looked to me like some sort of fishing... Uh, like trying to read, I don't know, but I can't even explain it. But he really, uh, it was something behind it, and I'd like to know what it was. But obviously, we don't, we don't get to know that. Um, yeah, but all round, another cracking go by uh, Dundee United. I can give you some background on Miller Thompson if you want. Uh, Fire away. Yep. <clears throat> obviously, as most people watching this probably know, and if I've got new viewers, hello. Um, my young brother plays for Dundee United. Um, he's currently out with a really, really, really bad injury, but he plays for Dundee United under 18s. <clears throat> and he played alongside Miller Thompson quite a lot. And Miller kind of played in the right back for the under 18s. But then he got he played in central midfield, right wing, he got played all over the place. But he was predominantly a right back. But he was head and shoulders above everybody else. Um, this young guy, he was, he was, <clears throat> you know, that way when you watch under 18 football and, and some, but it's even sometimes when players are that good, they don't then go and make the transition, right? But when you're watching under-18s football, you're watching your football, and there's that one player that stands out and you go, nah, he's just better than everybody else. Um, that was Miller Thompson. That's how good that young boy was. And I've seen him quite a lot. Um, absolutely smashing. But out and loan last season, can't remember who to. Um, maybe maybe one of you have got that on the computer, I don't know. Had a cracking loan spell and he's come into this first team and knowing his mentality, knowing the way that the, the young boy thinks, um, he will, I, I think he will be a, a top, top, top player for Dundee United, if he stays there. Martin, you have to agree that Dundee United have, have been synonymous with this through the years. They do give youth a chance, don't they? Um, I think they had another, they had another young boy playing in the, in the group stage of the League Cup. He scored that appeal. Brandon, Brandon Forbes. There you go. So they, they've got it in the locker. And young boys will be at that club knowing, do you know what, see if I'm good enough here, I might actually get a chance. Well, the big thing for Dundee United was it was money. It's money for them. It was bringing through the youth players so they could sell them on for money, which is what you've seen with Rory McLeod. They were desperate. Well, I don't know this. This isn't any inside information, but from the way I looked at it was he was going to Fulham. That fell, that fell through. Then he was going somewhere else, and he was getting minutes in the first team. Um, but he was only getting minutes off the bench. But they, they do have a pool of academy players, and I'm fortunate that my brother's one of them because as annoying as it is, he's a good wee player. Mm -hmm. um, and they do. They give you a chance. I, I've seen Jim Goodwin at the academy games many, many times. He's constantly there. And if he's not there, he's assistant there or a coach for the first teams there. So if you are at Dundee United and you are a young player and, and you show potential, you absolutely will get a chance. Just like Brandon Forbes who came on and scored that free kick. Um, Brandon does that all the time at the under-18s. He's so quick. He's so direct. He cuts inside. He's got a Beautiful shot on him. Um, so, yeah, that's another one to look out for during the season. Yeah. And Thompson was on loan at uh, Montrose last season. Just and yes. a, and so that made him. That he had a crack and loan spell out there, apparently, by all reports. Okay. I should be the Dundee United reporter, shouldn't I? I mean... <laughs> Could it be the Arab rabble here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I'll strap in, folks, because that's what you're getting all season long for Martin and Dundee right here. That's the best. only thing you're getting after me this whole show, by the way. I know nothing else. <laughs> and uh, if Martin's brother's watching, by the way, come on the show, mate. Um, <laughs> um, Martin, sticking with you, um, the big, big moment in this game for, for Dundee United. Um, you know, Dundee got a corner. Um, for for whatever reason, they sent everybody up front like it was the last minute of the game and left nobody at the back, which I think Tony Doherty was fuming with on the, the touchline. And uh, Trapanovsky ends up finding himself through one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. He digs it over him. And I think, is it 
Cowan, I think it might have been, manages to clear it off the line. Should this have been 3-1 Dundee United? And, secondly, was there a foul from the goalkeeper of Trapanovsky? I don't know if that is classed as a foul. Um, you look at something like that and you go, well, I mean, the goalkeeper's came through, he's really late, he's took him out. Technically, that should be a foul, but they're never given his fouls. They're never, you look throughout the history of football, they're not given his fouls. Um, but yeah, uh, there was no conviction in the shot, in the chip. Um, it was a it was a tame effort. Um, if that's, a, I don't know, a, a Lawrence Shankland or a Bojan Majofsky or a Kyogo, that's a goal. That's the difference, I think, in levels. When you Don't get me wrong, he's took the ball from basically the halfway line and ran me. He's done brilliantly up until that point, but he has to finish that. Yeah, I mean, Robert, for you on that one, do you think it's a case that should he be trying to take that round the goalkeeper or just trying to, you know, like almost blast it uh, over him rather than the sort of silky dink? I mean, in fairness, if the Dundee defender isn't as quick at getting back, it probably turned those in anyway. But um, as Martin said, he, he didn't quite put enough on it. Um, and with some of those players Martin mentioned, that's almost always a goal. Listen, I think just to answer your, your question that you pushed to Martin, I, I'm glad it's not given us a, a foul. I think, you know, I, I, I think that's part and parcel of football for me. Um, but he he probably just doesn't do enough. It's maybe just a rush of blood to the head, the occasion. He's thinking I can put this game to bed. As you say, it's Lyle Cameron who's, who's sort of charging back Cameron. as well. Um, so, it's yeah, it's, it, it's one that he'll probably be, he'd, he'd been playing back for the last couple of days over and over in his head because he could have made himself a, a, a cult hero um, for sure. But, um, no, I think as you say, maybe just a rush of blood to the head and could you go around him? Could he smash it? There's a couple options there, but he certainly didn't pick the right one on the day. No, no, he certainly did not. And to be fair, you've got to give some credit to Lyle Cameron because it's it's good tracking back for him. He showed good pace uh, to, to get back. He was also there. screaming at the top of his lungs. But do you know what I found do you know what I found ironic about that? He was screaming at the top of his lungs, why is nobody back? He wasn't the back either. He just <laughs> left. He just absolutely. He was up beside everybody else. He's screaming and shouting, "Why is nobody back?" It was like the whole place felt quiet, and you could just hear that one voice. <laughs> he was in the back, but he just mm. he made a good recovery run. To be fair, true. Yeah, uh, and Ian, I don't think there'll be any debate about this next one. I think this is probably as clear cut a penalty kick as you're ever likely to see um, this season. You know, Simon Murray. Obviously, we had a chat about them about him there, but he proved the kind of handful he can be because Dundee and Jim Goodwin said it as well in his his post match press conference that they were expecting Dundee to try and hit them with those long balls up, you know, through the lines for for Murray to go and chase. He does on this occasion keeps himself just about the right side of onside, uh, and then Ross Graham, it's a wild lunge, and he just he, he's he's taking Simon Murray out, stonewall penalty. Ross Graham's made a ricket and he knows he's made a ricket by letting it go over the top of him, misjudging it, and he's trying to get back in. Um... This episode is brought to you by our good friends at NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube TV. I'm sure by now you've all gotten back into your Sunday routines, but they could be even better. With NFL Sunday Ticket and YouTube TV, you get the most live NFL games all in one place, every game, every Sunday, and you can even watch up to four different games at once with multi-view, one of my favorite inventions of this decade. It's exactly what you need to catch all the action, make your Sundays more magical. And also YouTube TV is great. I got it this year. It's awesome. Sign up now at youtube.com slash BS device and content restrictions apply. Local and national games on YouTube TV. NFL Sunday ticket for out of market games excludes digital only games. The one thing I'll say is is he making a genuine attempt to play the ball on that one? Because I've watched it back a couple of times, and I, I mean, I can't make my mind up, so I think the booking overall is probably the right decision. But there was a little bit of me thinking, is he, did he get away with it? Could he easily have seen red for that challenge? Because the studs were up, it takes him in the ankle, the ball's away. Um, but, you know, I think it's, it's the double jeopardy rule anyway that he's... Um, does he, d- does he need he to send him off. Does he need to lunge in? Because I'm, of my no, point of view... absolutely not. I'm thinking, can you not just almost just put your body in front of Simon Murray and shield the ball out? Because it's quite messy. Murray's not in full control of it, really. And I'm just thinking, if he just sort of slides his body across him, which defenders do all the time, he probably defends it. So doesn't really need to lunge in, does he? 
Sadafi, he doesn't need the lunge in, but he's panicking. You've got to go to war. Sadafi. <laughs> but in the box when you're leaving. All right, Roy Keane, right, calm it down. Nah, yeah. I, did, I did not do the accent. I just want to state that. I did not do the accent. <laughs> But the thing is, all right, when you leave it 2-1 in a derby, and at, at that moment of the game as well, Dundee United had been the better side. You know, Dundee had had one or two moments where you thought, oh, they're, they're certainly pushing for an equaliser. But up to that point, Dundee looked in control. And then that, that was just a, a bit over the top figure. You want to make a statement, but you want to make a statement challenge in a derby, whether it's the first minute or whether it's the 90th minute. And he's obviously went into that thinking, I'm going to clear this ball and I'm going to take him out. Should he have done it? No. But should players do many things when they're on a football pitch? No. You're in a derby. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You say in a derby, right? If Leon Balligan does that to Kyogo in an old firm, are you know coming on here fuming that he's made that challenge? Absolutely. But if Leon Balligan does that to Kyogo, gets the ball and wipes him out, I'm on here praising him. And yeah. if he does that, if, if, if Leon Balligan does that to Kyogo in an old firm game, he also gets a red card. <laughs> well, right, right. well, you, you uh, just took it down a notch. Can I just actually say while we're on that? Sorry, um, to cut in. If you're watching this and you are a supporter of Dundee United, Dundee, Celtic, Hibs, Hearts, whatever, and you want to come on the show, you want to appear on the show, um, we want voices from other football clubs. We, us four, are Rangers supporters. Everybody watching this will know. We are Rangers supporters, um, but we want voices <clears throat> from every team in the league. It's the Scottish football show. We try our best not to be biased. Of course there will be bias. Of course there will. But we try our best not to be. So if you're a supporter of any other team in the top flight and you want to come on the show and have a go as or of your point and you want to appear on a full show, then get it in the comments or email rangersrabble at gmail.com. Yeah, absolutely. As Martin says, we are Rangers supporters, but we're all Rangers supporters who... Love talking about Scottish football and talking the game up. Um, nah, well, right. I mean, not what that for. Okay, we've spent quite a fair amount of time on that game, but it deserved it. It merited it. <clears> Can I just um, finish off on that game, Connor? Actually, apologies, apologies. Right? Yep. See if you look at the final, <clears throat> excuse me, the final match stats. Right? It was in terms of shots, it was 15 14 in favour of United, nine on, tar- nine on target for United, four on target um, for Dundee. But the overall possession, when you include that first half, Dundee had 62.9% of the possession. So see if you actually look at the final stats, I think if you're Tony Doherty coming away for that game, um, you're looking at that going, we didn't start well, but we made a much better account of ourselves in the second half and we actually played, I think they played really well in the second half, Dundee. They should have won it. They should have won the game. They should have won it right. But that's Curtis Main. That's what Curtis Main gives you. But if if you're Tony Doherty, Robert, coming away for that at the end of the game, First game of the season, it's a derby, anything can happen in a derby. I think he comes away with a happier manager. Yeah, I think uh, probably. Um, I'm sure he will do. Away from home as well. You know, they've not got the best record at Tanner Dyson when they have played them in recent times. Well, it's not very far away for him, to be fair, is it? <laughs> no, well, they did say that. They've done the, the sort of the traditional walk across Fade Ends to, to Tanner Dice, which is, I like that, keep a bit of tradition going. To be fair, if you used a, a bus, you're lazy to do that um but yes so um shifting gears we move <clears throat> uh back down the road back down the m8 to glasgow the east end of glasgow uh it was celtic and kilmarnock's turn to open up their campaigns um yesterday following the dundee derby it was on sky sports as well um and <sighs> overall this this was a a fairly simple sort of game for Celtic in the end, wasn't it, Ian? Um, 4-0, Kamarnik coming off a bit of a European hangover, would you say? Yeah, I think this kind of shows that Kilmarnock haven't got the depth and strength to cope with with uh, domestic and European football at the same time. They've, they've kind of rested um, some of their better players for this one with their uh, Thursday night match in mind as well. Um, it's for Kilmarnock is probably the worst possible place to go at the start of the season. Uh, a hyped up uh, Parkhead with the, on Trophy Day, um, everyone ready to go. And Celtic did look impressive in parts. Uh, they're knocking that ball about quickly. Kilmarnock at times were just guessing where the ball was going. The movement was good. Um, so credit where credit's due. They were the Celtic did play well. Um, it was. I think Kilmarnock can be in for a long early part of the season just because of the rigours of having European football in, in the background as well. 
Um, but I mean, they had their chances early early doors. They certainly had their chances. They could have they could have done a bit of a shocker on them, but overall, the, it, it told that the, the, the strength and depth that one team had over the other. It told uh, as the game went on. Eighty-two percent possession, thirty-two shots to five, thirteen on target to two. I mean, I mean, it's it's a doing. It's an absolute doing. But if you're a Celtic supporter watching that and you're looking at that lineup, apart from Casper Schmeichel, not a single new signing in that Celtic team. Um, it, so does, it, it doesn't look like they're, <clears throat> they're going to really need it domestically, well, European wise, possibly, but domestically. But, that, but that for any Celtic supporter that you speak to, the and my old boss in work used to say to me, "I it's great we win the league, but we're dreadful in Europe, and I'm fed up with." Yeah. Um, I think I think if, there's no real there's no negative for any Celtic supporter to take away for that game. They were excellent. They controlled the game. O'Reilly again shown that he's probably the best player in the league. Um, I don't think anybody can really. Is he going to? Do you think that. he's? Do you think he's going to leave in the summer? Uh, seen rumours out today that Brighton are apparently up in their interest in him. I think Celtic are looking for somewhere in the region about twenty-five million for him. Will they get that? Is another thing. But do you do you think by the September first he will be off elsewhere? If somebody matches the valuation that Celtic set, then yeah, absolutely. He'll, he'll, he'll be gone. It's hard to value players in Scotland. It's really, really difficult to value players in Scotland because you, you can't look at a, a Matt O'Reilly, right, who plays fantastic against that Kilmarnock team and go, he's worth 25 million. You just, and, you, and if it was Rangers, it would be the same. The way that you big up your value is by playing well in Europe if you're a Scottish team. And I've not really watched Celtic in Europe. Um, so I can't sit here and tell you what Matt O'Reilly's valuation is, how much you should go for. Etc. Etc. But if somebody matches the valuation that Celtic set, then yeah, he'll be away. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, well, on the, the game itself, Robert, um, Celtic took the lead through Rio Hitati, another man who's been very much uh, had the the transfer speculation ramping up around him as well, which he would be a blow if he left. I think that proved last season when he was missing for a, a while through injury. But uh, yeah. Um, a bit of a mix-up in the, the Kamarnik defence before this one. Mayo give the ball to Greg Taylor, who then manages um, to find Hattati in the edge of the box. And to be fair, it's a great finish for Rio Hattati. Not much uh, Robbie McCrory can do about it. Listen, Kamarnik just did not get to grips with Celtic and how quickly they started. Um, been saying it for a couple of seasons on this show. I think the way you win... The Scottish Premiership is by moving teams about quick and having a great tempo week in, week out. Uh, and Celtic have showcased that under their previous manager. Maybe not so much last year under Brendan Rodgers, but they seem to be getting things together this year. Um, you mentioned Hitati will come, we'll probably come on to Kyogo. Players look much more like themselves under Brendan Rodgers, where I think early doors they didn't. They looked kind of out, out of sorts. James Forrest looked like he was 26, no nearly 30 odd. Um, he he really rolling back the years there alone in that game as well. So I think it's a great finish. I have to say, but like these guys, um, I don't think Cole Marmot even it's the mentality just said to me they just cut, got go up, just get 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 rid of the game, put it under the carpet and move on. And I think that seemed like the the attitude for, before kick which I think is really poor for Denny McKinnis. I'm not going to sort of slander him, but I think you've got to go there and make a better fist of it. But they couldn't, they weren't even stringing passes together. They were just sort of sitting back and waiting to get beat. They almost like they accepted it and. And I get that you're in Europe, but the, the trouble you have with the Smyrna probably manage a bit better actually in terms of the recruitment they've done. But you look at Hearts, Hearts have gone and get sort of three players, oops, sorry, three players for every position because they know they need to have that bigger squad if they're going to do anything in Europe. So I think Coman are, are going to get a, a real wait, a, a wait in this year and try to see how Denny McCurry tries to balance domestic and European and keep everyone fit as well. I will say, Connor, on that first goal, it is horrendous defending, it is amateur amateur defending but I think Robert's absolutely spot on because if you I know I'm, I'm going ahead here but if you listen to Derek McInnes's interview after the game he pretty much said in that interview that we didn't get any injuries I'm happy it was almost as if they went there to just and look let's be brutally honest if Kamarnock could went there with a full intent with our, with our strongest team and Celtic go there with full intent with our strongest team 99 times out of 100 99.9 times out of 100 Celtic win because they're a much better team than Kamarnock but yeah, I got that feeling throughout the game that Kilmarnock were almost just kind of sitting off. Let's just get out of here without getting a doing. And to be, and you have to say fair play to Celtic. They capitalised on that and absolutely battled them. 
Yeah, they they did, and I mean, listen, Ian, you know, you're never going to judge Kamal like, really on on game a game like that. Opening day, as you said earlier, you know, Celtic, their fans are there for the sort of the, the title after party, if you will, for for the flag being raised. So that compounded with the European performances, but you, you might have felt given Kamalik had a fairly decent record against Celtic last year, fairly 50-50 in the games, you know, they won, beat them twice knocked them out of the cup, got a draw at, at Parkhead as well um, but they didn't really turn up in this one, the only real chance they did have which I did manage to take note of, there was one um, or two um, was, you know Vassell, I think, showed the kind of strength he's got when he managed to he actually out-muscled Carter Vickers, which is not a, an easy feat uh, to do, and he managed to, to whip it in for, for Matty Kennedy, who got a, a, a half decent effort away, given that, that it's a first time half volley and uh, goes straight to, to Cashworth Schmeichel. Um, I mean, do you think he could have done any better with that? It was only 1 0 at that time, so had, had he managed to convert that, it might have changed things. The quality that Matty Kennedy's got, he could have done better with it, but it comes to him fairly quickly. He gets a good connection, it just goes to exactly where Kasper Schmeichel's standing. So um, on another day, like last season, I think in, in full flight last season with Kamala, that may well have been different. But uh, they di- they didn't seem to be, like Martin said, they didn't seem to be. It was more of a contained, make sure we get out of here without getting an absolute doing um, and, and and focus on, on Thursday because Thursday's ma- bigger for the club than got, this game. got an absolute doing. That's the trouble that like Martin says. Well, they did. Like, the tr- they you did know, doing. Just go there and have a go because the result might just be exactly the same. But at least you can see, you know, you've got that to sort of back it up. Well, we we tried our best. We, you know, I. It, it was, was a good. concentration for me, Robert, and that first goal was so evident in the concentration. It was so amateur defending; it was untrue. They had the ball. All they had to do was lump it up the park, and I don't. I, it was as if they were confused. But I, I don't want as four Ranger supporters this to sound like silver grapes. I don't think any of us are sitting here and taking anything away from Celtic. Because the, the link up play between O'Reilly and Hatati um was excellent. Rio Hatati coming back into that Celtic team fully fit is a game changer. He is a cracking player. Kyogo looked as, like the sharp Kyogo that's destroyed Rangers over the last few seasons. So I'm not sitting here saying that the only reason that Celtic won that game was because Kamarnik went there and weren't interested. Um not not, not saying that at all. I, I was just disappointed mm-hmm. with but does that not then show you how important Europe might be to clubs like Kamarna? Just simply financially, and that he's putting all his eggs and getting to that. Is it the Europa League group stage Kamarna could go, or is it the Europa League in it? That, that four or five. No, 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 no. It's the conference. conference, now, conference, conference. Now. conference. Yeah. Yeah. See that? See that? Two million they would be guaranteed by getting into the conference. Maybe that's more important to Kamarna than than putting in a performance against Celtic and Park. No, listen, it's, I think it's it's important overall for Scottish football. I mean, let's look at it. We've got three teams who will be in group stage football. If both St Milne and Kilmarnock somehow were to pull that off, that would be an incredible feat for Scottish football to have four or five teams. In We've been crying, stage. Connor. We've been crying out for that for years. And yeah, I mean, to be fair, uh, listen, if you actually take, it, take it back, Connor. Take it back when Scott Brown was in the newspapers having a go at Rangers and the rest of the teams in Scotland for not being in Europe and then fast forward to us getting to a European final, Celtic getting beat in Europe comfortably and no other team in Europe doing anything. So if we could have five teams in Europe, it puts more money into the game. If we get better players coming through the youth, all good, man. Yeah, all good. Absolutely. We well, to listen, and we'll come on to them later, but you know, St Mum put in probably one of the best out with Old Firm European performances we've seen in a long time uh, last week. Yeah, so you never know. But anyway, um, sticking with this one, Robert... We spoke about defence for the first goal. This this is just as bad. Arguably, it's worse. Now, listen, first thing to say here is, fair play to Liam Scales. It's a great header he gets on it. He manages to get good power on it and directs it exactly where you want it to be into the corner. For you know, for a centre-back who's not necessarily known for his goal-scoring prowess, that's a lovely finish. But, and I hate to do this, because we sang his praises on this show last season, but what on earth is Lewis Mayo doing? He completely loses his man, and then he—I oh, mean—he slips. But there's no way that Liam Scales should be getting round him with that much ease for a free header. No, absolutely not. Um, just gets down, and at that minute, you just know that it's where, where that goal's ended up. As you say, fair play to Scales. I think 
Gary McInnes obviously highlighted that the, 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 the back line had been sort of makeshift in the sense that they brought the boy up for on loan for Sunderland, had to throw him straight in. I think they met, they met the guys on Saturday morning, he was straight in on Sunday, so you know, communication could be a, could be cited in that one. But yeah, it's just a it's just that poor poor boat to lose. Um and for that moment on, I think, you know, you just knew where this one was ending up, it was gonna be whatever Celtic wanted it to be, to be honest. Can Absolutely. I just can I just say though, right, to be to be honest, it's a cracking header. Ah, he's done really it's well. An really absolutely well. cracking header. And I and I don't even think Celtic fans would argue with us saying that if Celtic want to progress in Europe and do better, Liam Scales cannot be Celtic centre back. Um, mm. long term he is not good enough. Carter Vickers, I hate to say it, fantastic centre back. He marshals that defence really well and probably helps Liam Scales through it. But long term Liam Scales is not a Celtic centre back, but that is a cracking header. Uh, no, absolutely, it was a cracking header. Um, <clears throat> and then, you know, as Robert says, Ian, uh, Martin, sorry, we'll go with you. Um, as Robert says there, you know, at that point, it was pretty much game set and match. Uh, and if it wasn't, Nicholas Coon certainly made sure it was shortly after. Um, again, poor Lewis Mayo. <laughs> he seemed to be involved in everything. Um, you know, again, it's good play, you know, for, for Coon. I, I have to say, though, right, it, good play, good good hit, deflects off me and goes in. But my pet peeve with this, and I hate seeing this, especially as a goalkeeper, when I watch my defenders do this, he has, you know, travelled a fair distance with that ball. There's three or four commandant defenders there. Somebody put a tackle in. I mean, come on, they're all stood <laughs> yeah. up. Again, yeah. again, taking nothing away from Nicholas Kuhn, because he struggled in the early part of last year, and he seems to really be looking a player now under Rodgers and done well but for me your defender's got to try and make a challenge here. I think it goes back to what we spoke about in terms of the mentality of the commandment team going out there I think maybe that's got something to do with it but again you have to say <clears throat> a defender's worst nightmare is when a, a fast attacker is running at them and he's done really well and he's done that thing with his feet but it confuses defenders and they're going left they're going right as he's cutting inside what nine times out of ten that either deflects over the bar or it hits off a defender and goes out Marnock were having one of those days. Lewis Mayo was having one of those days. It goes off his foot and it goes over Robin McCrory's head. I don't really think there's much really that could that could be done about it. No, certainly isn't. Uh, okay. Good play yeah. from Kuhn, though. Good play from Kuhn. Yeah, great play from Kuhn. Uh, okay, it was 3-0 at this stage. It doesn't <clears> matter much, but it is a contentious moment in the game. Um, after Kyogo gets a goal ruled out for offside, uh, Celtic get a free kick, which is launched into the box. Kyogo looks like he's going to get on the end of it, or maybe just get a touch. Collides with McCrory uh, and, and the Kilmarnock goal, and claims are there for a penalty. Michael Stewart and Mark Wilson thought it was a stone baller on sports scene. Um, what is your take? Is that a penalty kick for you? Hmm. Uh, see, I, I don't know about this one. Um, my initial thoughts. Uh, yes, then. <laughs> my initial, my initial thoughts were not a penalty, but when it was replayed, it was like, do you know what? I could, I can understand if it was given. I could understand why they would give it. Uh but it's gone to VAR. VAR have said it's not. There must be something there. I know that VAR gets a bad, a bad press, particularly in Scotland, for the way it goes. Um, but. They didn't give it. I mean, I'm surprised it wasn't given, not because of um, where it was. It was, it, for me, on first glance, it was a penalty. Robert, for you, quickly, penalty, no penalty? Listen, penalty or no penalty, I just think, where is McCrory meant to go? Like, where else can he go but where he ends up? Um, you know, he's coming out He's coming out to get that ball. Uh, it's sort of dinked over yeah. um, the back line, and then, you know, Kyogo makes his way through, which he's very, very good at. Um, so listen, it's one of them. I just think um, they're not going to be crying over it. They won the game handsomely, so I think it's a bit of a known event. Um, but what I will say is, like, you know, if it's if it's nil nil and that happens, then the, the place is probably up on um, rapture. Kyogo's well, repu- reputation going against them a wee bit, maybe. Uh, uh, yeah, possibly. I uh, I mean, listen for for me, um, and you know me, keepers union and all that. Me and Ian. Um, I think there was there was a case for a penalty. The one thing I would say, I think Kyogo is that quick that McCrory is 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 doing the right thing as a keeper coming out to try and clear it, and it's just a question. I think if he'd given it, probably would have complained. But as you say, bit of a non-event given that they were three up, um, and then of course 
Uh, the goal scorer was rounded off by Tony Ralston. Um, again, Kyogo was involved. Um, it's, gets his effort saved by McCrory, but it's straight into the path of Ralston, Robert, for a tap-in, and it kind of summed the afternoon up for, for both teams. You know, some great play for Celtic and some not-so-great play from Kilmarnock. I think you're doing him a disservice, and it was a tap-in. I think it was a decent finish from a tight angle, to be honest. Um, and a bit of redemption after this, this poor summer that he's had. Look, to go back to the original um, sort of opening gambit that Martin gave, Celtic have have got a, a, their board, they've got a big decision to make. So look at that thing and right, look, we don't need anything for this league. We're fine as we are. But as Martin says, they're going to a new format in the Champions League, more games, home and away, you're not playing each other twice. And the Celtic fans are demanding that they get through and they maybe, you know, the next round. So to do that, you don't need, you're not going to be able to go out and get two, three million pound players. They're going to need to go out and spend seven, eight, nine, ten million pounds on these guys to come in and have, you know, quality to start. So the board have got a massive decision to make over the next what twenty odd days. Um, so we'll see how that pans out. But it'll be interesting to see if, if they go the way and think, now nah, we've got enough. What how how Brendan Rogers will play that out in the media? It's especially yeah. if they do end up selling O'Reilly. But regardless of, regardless of the money they get for him, that's a big hole in their team if he goes. And that that fourth goal, as you're saying, Connor, that's again started though by Callum McGregor in the middle of the park. That's. Celtic mm. are doing really well. They could rest on their laurels. They could rest up and, and take their foot off the gas, but McGregor's still there. He's getting his shirt basically pulled off his body. He still gets past the man and sets, sets uh, I think it's Ralston, he sets away in it. Yeah, it is. Aye. Um, okay, well, we'll park that one there um, and God. we'll shift ourselves um, east to Tannadice um, in Edinburgh. This this one won't take us. Tannadice? Tyne Castle, I've got Tannadice in the brain, you see, it was that good. Um, Tyne Castle is what I meant to say, there's too many T's. Um, yes, Tyne Castle. Um, there, there won't be an awful lot to say about this one. What I'm conscious to do, right, because I know we've all had our say on this over the week. Well, I don't know if you have, Robert, in terms of Fair Rangers point of view uh, and the connotations for us. So to try and do Wolf a bit of a, a service, given we won't spend much time talking about an now now draw, let's try and come at this for the Hearts perspective, if we can. Um, Ian, Hearts in this game, you know, the, in the early going in the first half, they certainly had some some chances to to go in front. Um, I think was it Vargas um, produced a great save out of Jack Butland at his near post. Um, and okay, some would say you should save at your near post, but it was a good save. Um, they certainly looked up for this one, Hearts, didn't they? I, I I mentioned it on uh, the pod that we had done that that you're going to go to you're going to go to Edinburgh you're going to play Hearts on the open day of the season it's a, such a tight pitch the crowds on top of you they're going to be right up for it because they're playing Rangers on on day one they're going to expect their team to go for it which they absolutely did and like you say Vargas Vargas was everywhere in that first half and he was given now backline a torrid time uh, particularly down the right hand side. Um, Butland is, is a quality keeper. You're going to have to do a lot better than that to beat him at his near post. Um, but these things can take you by surprise sometimes if you're not expecting it to go that way. Um, I'm sure, like you already mentioned, as being part of the goalkeepers' union, that uh, the odd occasional one at your near post takes you by surprise and manages to sneak in. Mm-hmm. Um, but that first half, it was Hearts, for me, kind of blew their chances a little bit by not getting that early lead. They needed, I think they needed something out of what that that domination they did have in in the first half to 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 try and force us out a little bit more. Um, they would have been well worth it had they had they taken that lead as well. And uh, I mean, Vargas was just dangerous that entire first forty five minutes. We can't not praise Hearts Corner because Wolf will be in the comments absolutely <laughs> destroying us. I think the biggest compliment you can probably pay Hearts. As they finished third last season, um, Naismith done well. Um, and he's made some really good additions to that Hearts team. Really good additions to that Hearts team. He's made that Hearts team stronger. Um, and, and I think they'll be a difficult team to catch um, for third place um, this season, especially as the new players bed in and, you know, Jan Dander starts to get a grip of the, uh, more games for them. Vargas looked, looked really good. Taylor, the boy at right back that they brought in, um, looked extremely solid and has some throw on him. So he's actually made a Hearts team that finished third last season um, even better. And the, the only thing stopping Hearts from progressing is Stephen Nismith. 
Yeah, I mean, Robert, that's a, a fair point, is it? And to, I mean, for you, so far, as we sit here on the 6th of August, have Hearts won the summer transfer window so far in terms of they got their business early, Danda, Spittle coming in the door. 7th Smart. August, 7th August, 7th August. August. It's, the, it's the 6th of August, mate. Um, it's the 7th of August. It's no. Going out tomorrow. It's going out tomorrow. Oh, right, right, okay. I, yeah, very good. <laughs> We are recording this on the second. We'll, 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 we'll just edit that out. It's fine. We'll edit it. Yeah, out. Uh, yeah. Um, any, anywho, uh, for you have, uh, as we sit here on the 7th of August, have Hearts won the summer transfer window um, thus far for you? I look, you know, we talk about picking the best for the rest. They've certainly, you know, used that mantra in the, in the pickups they've done for, for in Penrice and, you know, Danda, who's been mentioned, and Spittle, who you've said before as well. So, um, but I do like the look of this, this fullback. It's cost can fullback. They, they've obviously got a scout over there or in that negative one because he's picked up Vargas and then he's picked up Taylor as well. Um, what I will say is I, I think they sort of, it was a Taylor two halves that game, wasn't it? Clearly, um, they played really well first half and, Rangers always came into the second half, so as, as Ian said, they'll be kicking themselves, they're capitalising all their opportunity they did have. Um, I would say, you know, if you sit here on the 7th of August, that the um, heart <laughs> are, you know, are a shoe in for third. However, I do think they'll have a bit more competition uh, and they'll be running a bit closer than they were last year. Well, should that be the next one that Paddy Power pay out on Ian Hearts to finish third? I mean, it's only one game, but I think we've seen enough um, ourselves anyway to confirm that and all, have we not? I think they've probably already paid out on Hearts finishing second in the way that Paddy Power work. But um, <laughs> and if they want to clip, if they want to clip that little bit and put it on one of the little uh, Twitter ads, then feel free. Um, but uh, I won't pay in if they do. Um, yeah. But can I can I just point out as well? I, I'm playing stat man in this episode, right? I, I, absolutely. Stat-o. Forget forget the possession rate. We just had sixty two percent of the, the overall possession. Forget that. Um, it was nineteen shots to nine for Hearts, but both teams had three shots on target. So if Naismith's if Naismith's taking anything away from that game, it's that they need to get better at that. Because if they had a few more shots on target in that first half, one or two might have went in the way that Hearts. Hearts approach that. Do you, do you think so, it was a a missed opportunity for Hearts to get the three points? I know we had, you know, Rangers had chances as well that he could have won it. But in terms of when you look at Naismith's tenure at Hearts, he's had seven cracks against Rangers. He's not won any of them, and uh, that's probably as close as he's as he's came. But will he, in in the background, be kicking himself about thinking that was that was probably the opportunity there? Well, I've kind of blocked the game out from my memory. If I'm being brutally honest with you. Um, but can you think of a an absolute clear cut chance that Hearts had um, that was better than any clear cut chance that we had? Um, I don't think so. I think it was uh, the first first half was Hearts, second half was Rangers. Um, albeit Hearts had far more shots, but again, if you're having 19 shots, you're only getting three on target. Then yeah. you know you kind of really complain with a draw. No, absolutely. Um, okay, well, before we round this off, we'll we'll go around you and get you get your answer on on this one. I think I know Martin and, and Ian's, I suspect. But Connor Barron handball, uh, because Wolf won't forgive me if I don't at least bring bring it up, because I'm sure he'll be screaming it and quite right as well. I'd be doing the same. Um, Ian, penalty kick for you, or was that the right call made by the officials? I know this will come off sounding very very biased, considering what I've um said previously but for me not uh not a penalty on this one um i think as somebody in our own group chat put that uh, the the one that sports scene decided to use as a a compare and contrast was suitors handball for a similar thing last year which var then ruled to be the wrong decision uh, so if for me no penalty the, his hand is there so he's protecting his face and it hits his arm and biomechanics and all that stuff yeah, Robert, any issues for you? No, it's obviously there's been a, a change in the way they're approaching this handball because of how sort of well <laughs> a mess it was last season. So yeah, that yeah, sort of that's where I think the questions are coming in because people are so used to seeing the ones that were given last year. They're obviously trying to get away from that this year. Um so it wasn't given. I don't think there can be any complaints there. It's it's, it's as long as it's consistent throughout the season. Yeah, that's yeah. that's that is the point. That that has to then become consistent. Because the minute the minute an, a, another handball like that is given, 
then it's, oh, well, they favour Rangers or blah, blah, blah. Or they'll, they'll cast it back to this game. See if it's the last game of the season and an exact incident like that is given, whether the game's meaningless or not, then they'll cast it back to the first game of the season. The truth is, I don't know whether that's a handball or not because I don't know what the handball rule is anymore. We were all told, you know, by Willie Collum, and there's going to be more transparency and blah, blah, blah. And, um, the handball rule is going to be a lot tougher. They're not just going to be given handballs for every handball scenario. Had it been given, I don't think any of us could be sitting here going, well, I mean, it wasn't a penalty. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price. Priceline. You know... But it wasn't given. Oh, yeah, I agree. Um, okay. If, that, if those, that's given in an old firm game, by the way, by the hell. Hell. it's one of those, isn't it? Is if it's against you, you want it. If it's uh, if it's against you, you don't want it given. If it's for you, you want it. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Regular viewers of the Scottish Football Show will not be surprised to know that uh, the show does tend to go go across the hour mark, you know, we've still got three games to cover off and we're at 52 and a bit minutes here, so um, but this is because we love talking about it and this is, you know, you can't get enough, you know. Um, And also, let's be brutally honest, Connor, we're recording this before Rangers European game against Dynamo Kiev and we're all shaking ourselves. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely, the distraction is is more than welcome for us all. Uh, Okay, off to Paisley we go, Roberta, St Mirren v Hibs, um, now this one we we sort of had a chat before before we come on and we all kind of said that um, when you looked at the the scoring just the, the result you thought oh yeah so man I've I've given them an absolute doing it wasn't quite the case that first half um, when you see it was very back and forth they both had some some real good chances Hibbs in particular had some big big chances and. Uh, <laughs> One that Dylan Venter will not want to look back on anytime soon. Have we on game day, well, game day one, um, have we already seen the miss of the season? I listen, there's no getting away from him. And you know, he's seen minutes before that. He's involved in a very nice move. And it was um, Maletnikov. He says a wee flick to him and he gets a shot away and it's gets blocked. And then he goes and does that. It's, 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 it's really, not really come of age for him at, at Hibs yet since that move for, um, was it the, the, the Dutch second division he came with so much promise he scored so many goals he's just not able to do it uh, so far for Hibs so um, I thought St Mirren were actually sleepwalking in the first half um, I thought you know they missed Mark O'Hara um, I know um, Boyd Munns comes in but I don't think he gives them the same sort of edge as O'Hara does so um, again Stephen Robinson said he had to get them in at half time just to remind them what they were good at and and try and get them going again, which they did. But as you see, Hibs had a lot of chances in this game. A lot of chances. I'm sure the stat man's got them there, he'll tell us. But um, they just could not convert. Yep. Well, we've we'll put the stat signal up there. Come on, stat man. Do you think David uh, David Gray was thinking at half time that he wishes a boat would just come and the inventor would just sail away? <laughs> That's honking, by the way. That's so bad, isn't it? That's not even funny. That's how bad that is. Oh, dear. Uh, well, I was going to come to Martin next, but after that, Ian, I think I'll just stay. Uh, uh, Send <laughs> minim. I was. I'm desperately trying to make a, a David Gray reference in my head, and that was the only thing I could think of. I apologise to everybody. Oh, dear. Um, yeah, well, uh, Martin, um, after that, you know, the, the the first half continued along the same vein. Some some opportunities. Um, I think there was one. Was it uh, Olesanya slid a young guy in and he, mm-hmm. he puts it into the side net and he, go, he goes near post. You go far post there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cut. You should cut across the goalkeeper. Um, and then one that I, I do think is worth noting before we we delve into the goals. Uh, Balcom uh, for me uh, in the sticks makes a, a great save. First at man, because that, that ball deflects or ricochets off Gogic um, very, very quickly and it's it's low in his corner and he manages to to tip it um, you know, uh, out for a for a corner kick. Gogic looked slow for me in this game. Um I don't know if you are the only ones that 
maybe I'm the only one that, that, that feels that. But Gogic, Gogic reaction times in this one, he was almost took by surprise um, a few times. And yeah, look, it, it, was a, it was a very, very good save. I actually felt that even at points in the second half, but more so in the first half, Hibs had enough chances to at least score one or two goals for me. Um, and yeah, the Simbin and goalkeeper done well, but Hibs for me, if Hibs, if Hibs scored one of them in the first half, that is a completely different game. Um, the score the score says 3-0, but it does not tell you any of the story of this game. No, no it certainly doesn't. And um, I have it on good authority that Gogic reaction times is going to be St Myrna's first ever board game release very, very soon. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but yeah, Ian, St Myrna do get in front early on in the second half after everything that happened in the first half. Hibs must have been coming out thinking, right, keep trying to continue along the same vein, create opportunities, a goal will come. And it did, but it, it wasn't for them. Um, and, and you've got to say, Ian, I mean, this is a, a clear goal of the weekend contender list. Um, you know, a do I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm sure that's how you pronounce it. Um, a good bit of link-up play. And then down that, that side, he just he cuts back, almost a sort of Cruyff-esque turn. Um, and then just fires into the corner. I mean, it's a wonderful finish. There is only one way that I can describe this goal, and that is <laughs> sex on a plate. Sex on a plate. Absolutely. Sex on a plate. It was an absolutely fantastic goal, sublime um, way to to open the score, and a way to, a sublime way to open your own personal account as well. Um, I don't think you may you may not score a better goal all season than what he did there today. Um, he, he made a good effort at it. He hit the post with the one later on in the game. Scotty, well. see, it was it was almost six and a plate times too. Um, yeah, it would have been. My kitchen would have been just no. Uh, we'll leave that. <laughs> <later>. um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, it, over the second half, I think overall, I think St Mirren deserved that. I mean, Hibs could have been um, one, maybe two goals ahead before that even happened. But if you don't take your chances, usually there's a stinger coming. And and what a stinger it was! Uh, absolutely brilliant finish into the to the far corner. Uh, mm. No chance for the keeper whatsoever. Um, yeah, just a sublime goal all round. But 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 you say that Ian, right? But not long after that goal, Martin Boyle was through and goal and should score. But it's Martin Boyle, and Martin, Martin Boyle, Boyle has a barrel Martin, load of goals for Hibs. He does score a barrel load of goals, but also Martin Boyle's part of the catalyst reason that Hibs didn't score today because there was a few times he's put the blinkers on and he's not playing people in when he's had the chance to. So I put a lot, not not a, well, a lot of it, but it's particularly the chances in the second half that if Boyle just gets his head up and looks and slots somebody else in who's got a better position. But but, but that's the, but that's the type of game that this was though. It's Hibs, Hibs have been the better team in the first half. St Myrna have come out, scored an absolutely wonderful goal by a guy who looks like a player, by the way. Um, and then Martin Boyle, not long after it, is through and goal, and Hibs should score. And it happened another couple of times in that second half. So if you're David Gray, mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. if you're David Gray, you're coming away for that game going, I don't know what, we could beat 3 now, but you know, there's definitely optimism. There. They've got, uh, in, they've got in two wingers today, uh, Junior Hoyle and um, Nicky Cadden's come in as well. Like that, surely you'd be good and getting a finish, you need, you need a finisher. finisher. Somebody can get these yeah. chances. Yeah. Yep. Very fitting, Robert, isn't it, that Martin makes the David Gray references because he does babble on. Uh, <laughs> That's a good one. I like that one. I like that one. <clears throat> um, I'm here all right. Finished, retired. Um, but yes, um, it's a simple question for you for the, this second goal, Robert, but what's the defender doing? Because this is absolutely tragic defending for yeah, the but this is a game. I feel like Hibs just repeat the same mistakes year upon year. We've been saying for about four seasons they've got no defenders. They need centre halves in, and the centre halves they bring in are just not good enough. So, um, listen, uh, I think it's Scott, James Scott pounces on it, um, and then you've got um, O'Sheen Smith who gets the header away and makes it two 0 Plus, look, St Mirren came out in the second half and just seemed to control the game for that point. I think they, they took ownership, they upped their game. They, put their chances away. Um, you've got David Gray. I don't think he, he's, he's, Martin says, concerned about the performance. It's more so the result. They had, a, they had chances that they win two games, as the old cliche would say, and, and, and they've come away with a 3-0 defeat against a side that you put, they probably want to finish above St. this year. Let's be honest, they've come up with this all new, they've got new investment. They're going to be bringing all these players in and spending all this money. Is it Ben Kessler? Have I said his, is it, is I said his name right? He's promised 
it won't all just be loan signings. Hibs fans are up in arms. You look on social media, I'm not happy with the, the, the stewardship of the club at the moment. And that seems to be the, the running theme for the last for, for, well, you know, four or five years. Well, it, the stats of the game, right? Hibs 57.5% of the overall possession. Hibs had 15 shots to St Mirren's nine, but they only had three in target to St Mirren's four, but they had six block shots as well. So they had the majority of possession and they had the majority of the shots. So I think, like you're absolutely saying, Connor, you made the point, Hibs need a number nine. Yeah, no, 100% they do. Um, and I mean, let's be honest here, Martin, if you were to put money on the first manager to get sacked again this season, sad as it is to say, with the start they've had, David Gray, you know, I know he's good graces there because he's tight as captain and stuff like that. Um, but he needs better results than this and it isn't getting any easier for them at the weekend at all. Um, well, he, you know, he scored the goal in the cup final against us to win it for him, so I've got absolutely no sympathy for him. None. <laughs> <laughs> None. Yeah, so it's safe to say he's the early leader in the race to get your If I was to pick um, the first manager to get sacked, who I, would, I hope would get sacked, you all know who that would be. Um, but if David Gray goes, he goes. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Ian, it was it was all pretty academic at this point, although Hibs did have one or two bite back moments as Martin touches on with Boyle and stuff. But uh, um, Sabirin do eventually make it three, and it's that same combination again of James Scott and, and Smith linking up with each other. Um, and again, it's good run, good bit of play, cut across, and Smith just slots it into the, the, the bottom corner, makes it three now, and secures the three points. And a very good day for Sabirin, a very good week for them, in fact, because we spoke earlier about Kamarnik and European hangovers, and while there might have been an element of that in the first half, which Stevie Robinson alluded to. None of it in the second half. They were excellent. Yeah, cracking, cracking week for, for St Mirren. But what I liked about this goal was the intelligence from Smith. Because he can see that all the defenders are pushing back to get into position. And he just stops. And they're nice and easy. Alan looks up, cut back, bang, goal. Nice, nice and easy. Um, it's just the intelligence of two players who, who seem to have worked each other out quite, quite quickly. Um, it makes for a, a decent goal in the end. And like you said, an all-round Decent week for St Mirren, one that I think their fans are going to enjoy for quite a long time. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, we park, we park that there and we shift our attentions to Far Park. I think uh, basically... Oh, this won't take uh, long. No, no, I think, um, sum up in, in, two words, in two words, it happened. It, it yeah. was a game. It, it did take place. Not much to speak about in this. Um, I, I struggled to find many notes to put down, but I did manage to put down a couple. Um Motherwell, Robert, did have a couple of decent chances. Uh, the early going, Zach Robinson got through, slots it wide, another one of these one-on-ones with a keeper where he's, he's, he's got to score that. Theo Beer scores that, right? 100%. Theo Beer scores that. Um, this game, honestly, was just so void of any quality. The fact that it was the only other game on on the Saturday was the only reason that it got so much coverage on sports scene on Saturday night. I just thought it was... Um, so so poor. Uh, the only real um, sort of bit, 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 bit to talk about was probably Laid Laidlaw, the uh, county keeper. He made a couple of decent saves, um, but just I mean Andy Halliday, like what has happened to that guy? I thought he was really good at Got married. <laughs> Got married. Guy. Um, listen, I thought he was really good at Hearts in, in, in his first season, and he just seemed going off the boil. I, I don't. He can't make a five-yard pass. Um, he's really slow on the ball. Decision making poor. Um, I, again, on the, his, I don't even know why I'm on a football podcast. I predicted in the the, 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 the SPFL show that Motherwell would have a good season. Pff, could be a long one for them again. Well, that's it. Well, it I mean, do, do you want the stats, Connor? And then we'll move on. Do you want the stats? Go. Yeah, absolutely. 50-50 right. possession. Um, 12 <laughs> shots to seven in favour of Motherwell. Three shots on target each. Motherwell had 23 touches in, the, in Ross County's box and Ross County had 13 touches in Motherwell's box. Yeah, I mean there you go. Some summed up there. Um, I do, I do say, I do think that though that um, the, the the goalkeepers deserve a slight nod because both of them did actually make decent saves. Um, Ross Laidlaw, first of all, um, Ian as a fellow goalkeeper, um, you know, I'm a goalkeeper uh, as well. By the way, I just want to make that known. Oh, you're a goalkeeper as well. I didn't, I didn't know you were a goalkeeper. Um, there we go. Uh, okay, well, Martin. Another fellow goalkeeper. Um, we'll cover you. Laidlaw makes a decent save. Uh, close in effort for um, 
Wilson, well, for Wilson, who hits one for just outside That's a great hit. box. Oh, a what, great a hit. Hit. what a save. And just before that, he had one point blank hit at him as well by Obaye after um, Wilson also involved fires at a cross. So a couple of real good moments for, for him, especially after he didn't have his, his best season last year. Aye. I mean, is, is this the point that we've got to in this game where we're mentioning two saves that a keeper should make, but good saves at that? Um, Only thing that happened. The <laughs> That's the highlight, highlight of the game. The highlight of the game, <laughs> isn't it? And keepers have good games, keepers have bad, keeper have, keepers have bad games. Um, but yeah, when I mean, you're on a team like Ross County, you're always going to be under more pressure as the goalkeeper, aren't you? Um, so it's yeah. harder for you. It's harder for you. And yeah, hopefully that hopefully that helps his confidence going forward. Um, but we're really just padding now because I don't think there's much more to say. No, no, there isn't. There isn't much more to say. Who uh, is the mother goalkeeper? He's apparently uh, been here for a couple of years, and never played. Hale Oxborough. Um, apparently has been here for a couple Makes of years. Makes a good soup. Um, well, that God dear. <laughs> um, but the, the thing is, uh, Ian. And we'll end on this, but I think it's a question worth asking because when you look at Motherwell this season, they will be desperate to try and get into that top six because it was poor. Last season, we were on here in the first part, the first few weeks, um, you know, myself, Robert, even you, raving about how good they were playing Motherwell. At the time, Motherwell and St. Mirren were the standout teams. Kettlewell and Robinson couldn't put a foot wrong. And then it's just gone on a decline for, for Kettlewell. Now, losing Liam Kelly, obviously, him, with him coming in our direction, for you, is is it a concern that you've got a lad like Oxborough in there who, as Robert says, has been there for a while and never played, now taking the Rumble in jersey? Is that a, a potential weakness for Motherwell? I think the weakness now is the fact that they've lost a hell of a lot of quality throughout the pitch and they've not replaced that quality. Um, when, like you said, Theo Bear scores that goal, uh, so where are their goals coming from? Because they don't seem to have the, that sort of replacement in Kelly leaving and... and um, the new keeper coming in, I've forgotten his name. Um, uh, he's obviously not going to be uh, that for me personally. I don't think he's as good as, as Liam Kelly is. Um, so they've lost quality at the both ends at the very important ends of the pitch. And if they were to lose Miller in the middle as well, I think it will be an extremely long season yeah. for Marvel. Um, and it's making me make just my uh, well. just quickly, Robert. Does it surprise you have not replaced particularly Bear? Because I'm just thinking, right? And the reason I ask it is because I'm going back in my mind a good 10, 15 years in Motherwell. They've always had a half-decent striker up front in that time, whether it was John Sutton at one point back in the day, who was decent for them. You had Louis Moult, who was superb. Curtis Main had his best spell in a Motherwell jersey by far, because he's done hee-haw since he left them. Um, Van Veen, obviously, was up there. You had the, the, what was his name? The big boy they got for uh, Millwall, I think it was. Uh, Ryan Bowman. Um, and then, obviously, Theo Bear doing the job last year. Why haven't they filled that gap yet this year? Because well, they, 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 they've, they've tried. They? They've went out and spent money on the boy for the A League. He's on the bench. Um, yeah. So they, yeah, they're going to try. And, that, that's they put their eggs in that basket. They paid a transfer fee for him. I don't know if it was over a quarter million pounds, something like that. Um, so they'll be looking to try and get him up to up to to, to speed and, and get him firing goals. That's that's going to be the. Why didn't the why team. didn't why didn't they go for a Simon Murray, for example? Because he's surely at their level, he could he could do a job. Because I'd imagine Dundee paying more money than Motherwell. Fair, yeah, fair point. Uh, okay, uh, I think we've stretched stretched that out uh, long enough. Um, finally, we round off as the weekend did on Monday night last night. St Johnston against Aberdeen. Jimmy Taylor's first game in charge in the league. Martin, um, I thought. I must say that the early part of this game, I thought it was a decent game. I thought both teams had good opportunities. St Johnston, um, an early effort that was just over the bar. A header went wide. Uh, and Aberdeen as well. Um, listen, we all know our feelings on Aberdeen, but I, I was impressed by them because I thought that they looked really dangerous every time that they went forward. I'm going to put my hands up here and say I've only seen the five-minute highlight package of this game. Um, so from what I've seen, especially in that first half of it, and I'm only going by highlights, so Aberdeen fans, St Johnston fans, apologies. Um, but the most of the highlights seem to be um, for Aberdeen, and it seemed to be, again, Mayovsky leading the attack 
for Aberdeen looking really sharp. He had a, a phenomenal long shot that cannons off off the bar, and the majority of chances in that first half seemed to fall to Aberdeen. What I will say is, what a horrendous away strip that is. <laughs> uh, to be fair, I looked at that strip and, and genuinely I thought to myself, that could have been a Livingston home kit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is not high praise. Um, but to uh, Ian, um, Aberdeen got the first real big chance of the game. Um, Sockler, one-on-one with Josh Ray, who um, I must say, and I'll hold my hands up and say, I've seen him in person a few times last season at, at Air Reunion's games. I think he's a, a splendid bit of business for St. Johnson. I really, he's a top goalkeeper, that boy. Um, and he's got big things in his future. But a good save for him to send it wide. But again, as is the question, all these one-on-ones that the strikers seem to be missing. Soccer, I know they didn't have to wait long to go in front, which we'll come to, but Soccer should have put them in front there. If you switch it around and it's Sokla putting uh, Miofsky through, it's 1-0. Um, oh, luckily, this wasn't this was included in the two-minute YouTube video that I saw. Um, but, um, yeah, if you, if you switch the roles around, it, it's 1-0. Um, I think Sokla is a decent striker and, and take nothing away from the keeper, though. He spreads himself really well, um, gets that leg out to, to push the ball away. Um, I mean, uh, I'd be quite happy with making a save like that myself. Um if I can get my leg to do stuff like that, it'd be bad. It's got to see me and you might not get back up, though, after it. That's the problem. I wouldn't, no, I'd, no, I'd, no, I wouldn't get back up. There's no chance I'm getting... Once I'm on the ground, I'm, I'm, I'm popping me. a hip, if that if that's me. But, <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, uh, it, it should be one there at that point. It was a, a guilt edge chance. But, like I said, if you swap the roles around, it, it would be. I just don't think Sokka's on the level of Miofsky. No, he's certainly not. And, uh, Robert, as I said... Aberdeen didn't have to wait very long to go in front because from the resulting corner kick, um, I guess it's a good cross in. Nicky Devlin up there, heads home the opener for Aberdeen. Um, great ball, great header. Question marks over how he's got a free header in the first place. I'm sure Craig Levine, who does enjoy a defence, will will want to you know, look at that. Hey, listen, free header, nobody on the post. There's two things that, that stop that goal straight away. Um, I mean, just to come back on, on the occasion itself, uh, you have to credit St. Johnson fans. That's probably the, f- the fullest I've heard McDermott part, but it would be with, with a range of Celtic visiting. Um, Very close was, to a sellout. Really impressed. Absolutely. I thought it was quite a good occasion, to be fair. Um, I have been massively impressed with Aberdeen. That's why I said to you earlier, I think Hearts will be ran closer. I think he seems quite methodic. Uh, he comes across really well. Um, he's bought in a couple of players that the guys bought from Ellsberg and Middle Park at Nielsen. I think he really has shored them up in Middle Park, allows Shinny to, to move on. Soccer, I know Ian says there, he's, he's not in the mode of Majowski, certainly not. However, I do think he can he can come in and get them goals. That one on one, he takes a clumsy touch um, and, and it sort of runs away from him. Majowski, I thought, was off it in the first couple of minutes. <laughs> he proved me wrong. Rattles the crossbar for about 35 yards. Reports this morning, Genoa and Southampton are circling to put a bid in for him. He will does, like matter. Does that concern you for Aberdeen, though, in terms of... Because if he goes, I mean, what a situation with Duke. Soccer would be the main man, although you would like to think they'll, they'll try and replace Miofsky if they get good money for him. But it, is it a concern if oh, he I, does I, go? Without doubt, I think it's a concern for the league as well, because it's a massive bit of quality. If you're losing Matt O'Reilly and Boja and Miofsky, they're two of the best players in the division. I know Scott Wright, if he goes as well, it's just, it's all happening. <laughs> you know, they've brought in Peter Ambrose, who I only saw sort of momentarily against Queen of the South, and he, and he looked hungry and he had a bit of desire about him to try and get goals, but I think he's nowhere near the finished article. Mm. Um, so, uh, listen, Bojan Wielski will not be an Aberdeen player at the end of this window. There's, there's no doubt in my mind at all. Aberdeen will get good money for him. I think they'll probably get upwards of six million quid for him, uh, and he'll be on his merry way. Um, but he's um, he's certainly you can just see he's, he's levels above and, he, and what he and I think actually think last night you saw some great link up play between him and soccer that maybe we didn't see last season because they were going more one up top. So no, really impressed with Aberdeen and, and I do think um, Jimmy Tillin will, will get a tune out of these guys this year. He's so much more mobile, Mayovsky, than what Lawrence Shankland is. I'm oh, not yeah. turning this. I'm not turning this into a Mayovsky Shankland for Rangers debate. I'm just talking about they're the two strikers in the league that are always compared because they're the two best strikers in the. league. Well, they're up there. Right? Do you think Mayofsky okay. goes under the radar because he's not Scottish? The whole thing about Shanklin because he's Scottish. Shanklin scores more goals, though. That's the problem. Shanklin does score more goals, but Mayofsky's more of a, a complete forward. 
than what mm-hmm. Shankland does. If you actually, and I only watch the highlights, Robert, I know you watched a bit more of it. Um, you actually watch Miofsky play. He is such a good footballer. Very good, 100%. Is it, is it a case, Martin? Okay. Is it snobbery on the part of both Rangers and Celtic that neither of them appear interested? Because I, I know the price tag's one thing, right? But to be perfectly honest with you, I think Aberdeen are well within their rights to have that price tag. He's still a young enough lad. He's a quality footballer all round and absolutely guarantees you goals. So is, is it just, oh, you, can't, you can't sign a player like that for Aberdeen simply because he's there, even though he, he's more, in my opinion, more than likely good enough for either side? Just quickly on this, I think if you're Celtic, you've got Kyogo. I don't think you need Miofsky. I think you need a different type of striker um, to what Miofsky is because Kyogo, for me, when he's on forum, is the most lethal striker in the league. However, you have your Rangers and you're looking at Miofsky for what we have right now. 100% absolutely, he fits into your team. So to answer your question, I don't know if it is snobbery or it is the price tag or Rangers just don't want to pay Aberdeen a, a big sum of money. Yeah, yeah, possibly. Uh, okay, um, Ian, obviously, um, after another bit of tussling back and forth between both sides, uh, Aberdeen eventually do get a second goal that they deserved at that point, to be fair, because they had some moments where, you know, just a, a, a slight, maybe not necessarily poor decision making, but, um, you know, you had the one where they went forward almost three on two and, and the pass back just wasn't quite there. But eventually they go through again, and this is, I mean, again, the, the play for Aberdeen in the middle of the park all night was spectacular. Some of the, the link-ups were excellent, and for this goal in particular, um, obviously Jamie McGrath, the beneficiary, but the link-up between Soccer and Nielsen and the build-up to this was excellent. You know, lovely one-touch for them, and then Nielsen fires a perfectly weighted pass uh, for Jamie McGrath, who, you know, he's never... Ever. He's one of those players who doesn't miss in those situations very often. Now, I mean, like I said, I only saw brief, brief highlights of this game. But the one thing that did stand out was Nielsen in, in, for me in this game. is He just looked a cut above in the middle of the park compared to everybody else. And the ball through for McGrath, it, it, it would have, he'd have had to have done something similar to Vente to miss it, wouldn't he? It would have been harder to miss it than... Uh, than uh, hard. Yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. Um, I don't, but you probably do. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, and, and Jamie McGrath's a quality player. Um, I think I still think he's probably got a level above Aberdeen as well with Jamie McGrath. Not that I'm trying to get to, to sell him as well, but I think he, he could he could potentially be on be onto bigger and better things, but who knows? Um, yeah, he's not going to miss from there, particularly with the ball put through like that. Sockler Nielsen, good movement, good touch, good play into McGrath, bang, goal 2 0. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, Robert, St Johnston, to their credit, they didn't just roll over and give in. They absolutely tried to make it uh, you know, an interesting finish, which they did. They get a bit of luck. Mackenzie Kirk fires one across the six-yard box. Uh, ricochets in off Gavin Malloy. Um, and we, you know, at that point, what turned out to actually be 12 minutes left because there was nine minutes added time on it. It made it a little bit nervy. And you're on mute. Don't have Ryan there. Um, I was expecting so much more from Kim Pioca and Sidibe, I must admit. Um, when I saw they'd gone two up top, a lot of pace and, uh, and power in that front two, and I don't think they delivered on the night. Um, you know, St Johnson will need to do a lot better if they're going to pick up the results and, and push on for last year. Um, Nicky Clark comes on and, and obviously he's going to be the backup man this year, but he seemed to offer a little bit more in the five minutes in terms of energy uh, and buzz around the Aberdeen defenders than, than the other pair had for the previous 85. So, um, nervy finish, obviously, for Aberdeen, but just, listen, they'd be delighted to get the three points on the on the, on the the board. Can I just say a quick mention as well? I know we're, we're short of time. Dimitar Mitov, how much of a difference between him and Keller Rus? He brings a calm and influence. He's, he's encouraging his players when he's not getting the ball. He, he's giving them instruction. He's a great sign, absolutely, uh, absolutely perfect. So, no, it's um, it's it's it was, it's a good start for Aberdeen. They'll need to build yep. on that. If Mojovski does go, then that money will need to be put back into the squad. I'm sure Tallinn will be, will be telling the board just that. Yeah, I'll just quickly finish. I'll quickly finish on the match stats, and you can take whatever you want for us, right? Um, basically 50-50 in possession, which is for us in Johnston team, you're like that. Well, that's actually really good. 
15 shots to 21 in favour of Aberdeen. However, only two on target for St Johnston, six on target um, for Aberdeen. But here's the stat that really I, f- I thought to myself, you wouldn't think this. Total touches in the opposition's box. St Johnston had 27 to Aberdeen's 25. That's not something that you associate with a Craig Levine team. Yeah, true. But then a lot of those will have came in that last, you know, five, ten minutes or so when they were pressing it. Um, and to be fair, it shows the clinical nature of Aberdeen that, um, you know, 25 touches, two goals, and they'll be happily up the road with three points. But uh, we will park it there. Um, we, You know, um, two quick things to say to the viewers, just so you are aware. Um we were planning to do a, a bit of a new segment tonight, but we've kind of ran over time a bit, so we'll, we'll park it. But the next time um, we're on, we will bring that segment to you. It's going to be called The Eye Catcher, which is the thing that has caught our eye over the course of the weekend's football. It can be anything for the top flight. It can be any of the rest of the leagues. For example, mine's this week was going to be Ian Murray getting sacked. You know, whatever surprised you, and by all means in the comments below, let us know what has caught your eye over the weekend, because this shows about engagement. Um, the other thing to say as well... Um, Due to availabilities and things like that, the SPFL show this season will be once a fortnight rather than every week. So the next time we are on, will be live. I, I can tell you that. Um, all going well. The plan is to be next on on Sunday, the 18th of August. So a week on Sunday, we will be back to review all the, the action from that weekend. Um, all that remains for me to do in the meantime is to thank Ian, Robert and Martin. It's been a pleasure. Um, and until the next time, take it easy. Podcast Network. Hey, it's Ryan Seacrest. Life comes at you fast, which is why it's important to find some time to relax. A little you time. Enter Chumba Casino. With no download required, you can jump on anytime, anywhere for the chance to redeem some serious prizes. So treat yourself with Chumba Casino and play over 100 online casino style games, all for free. Go to chumbacasino.com to collect your free welcome bonus. Sponsored by Chumba Casino. No purchase necessary. VGW Group. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply.